Uh, my name is Faviana and I have Crohn's disease. The way Crohn's disease works is it's an autoimmune disease, so it just essentially means that um, your immune system doesn't, or my immune system doesn't recognize um, my intestines as part of my body, mm -hmm. so my immune system attacks it. And the way, the way like cancer like creates masses and like builds builds something up um, is kind of the way Crohn's disease like wears something down. I really didn't understand what it meant at first. Uh, the, the idea of having a chronic illness and accepting that you have a chronic illness when you're so young um, is a little hard because you don't really, you can't really accept the full like scope of the way it's going to change your life. Um, All right. So um, hi, my name is Fabi. I'm 15 years old. I live in Brownsville, Texas, and I have been diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. High school was a particularly difficult time for me because, um, I mean, obviously, like any other, you know, adolescent person uh, or people, um, my peers in high school kind of didn't really understand the gravity of the situation. I got made fun of a lot because of it and because of all of my surgeries and my weight gain and all the different kinds of side effects that came along with the medication and you know not being in school people always thought that I was dumb because you know I never really was on the same pace mm -hmm. as the rest of my class. July of 2011 I uh, was admitted into a children's hospital in Corpus Christi and I was there for about a month and that's when they um, decided that they needed to remove my colon. So um, I, I was there for, for a significant amount of time and they removed my colon and I lived with an, uh, oste an ileostomy bag for uh, almost a year and a half. And that, that was really difficult for me go, having to um, go to school and explain to my friends um, and explain to anybody really like, I have this medical condition and that's why I'm not in school or that's why I have to have been homeschooled for a small periods of time. But when I am at school, I, you know, I'm going to the nurse's office all the time and I have this bag um, that's attached to me that essentially, you know, where my waist goes into. In the morning, I, I, I wake up and I have to take three, three pills of, of one kind, two pills of another kind, and one of one kind. And then in the evening, I take two of one kind and then one of another kind. So in total a day, I take eight medications, or eight, eight pills. Um, and once a week, I give myself an injection in my thigh, um, and it's of an um, immune suppressant, so it suppresses my immune system. Uh, it's called methotrexate, and it's a form of uh, chemotherapy. It's what they give breast cancer patients. On average, I would say I spend about um, anywhere from like 100 to 200 dollars on medication every like two to four weeks. Uh, there's a, a, a certain type of um, infusion that I that my doctor thinks is medically necessary, and um, my insurance won't pay for it because they say it's uh, experimental and not medically necessary. And that infusion out of pocket, just the infusion, not counting like the facility fees or the pre-medication or the equipment or anything, just this one bag of medication is going to cost $17,000 per dose, which I would need to get every eight weeks. So $17,000 every two months. Um, so I, I work. Um, and I work as hard as I can to, you know, cover my bills and, and, um, honestly, for all of the payments that I have, I just make the minimum payments, um, which is enough to not ruin my credit score, but not really enough to actually, like, pay it all in a timely manner, because there are so many. For school, most of my professors are very understanding if I don't feel well, if I really don't feel well in a particular day to where I can't come to school. Um, I'll email my professors and say, you know, hey, I'm, I'm not feeling well, is there any way you can email me the lecture notes or can I, 
um, you know, can I come in and talk to you during your office hours, or is there anything that I need to do? And you know, most professors are really understanding. Some are a little, a little less understanding. Um, and and kind of uh, require a little more of me, but um, but for the most part, everyone's been been very understanding. Um, I'm a part of the uh, 504 program, and that's a that's a, a federal program that just kind of um, gives me a little bit more leniency. It's a student the disabilities um, program, so because I I do have this disability. Um, it's a uh, this student disability services um, gives me this contract at the beginning of every semester, kind of to give to my professors, just stating um, the rights that I'm entitled to, like uh, extended time on assignments if I need it, uh, being able to take tests in the testing center, um, being flexible with absences, being fle uh, flexible with uh, deadlines. I, I at first was really defeated by my situation and just thought like oh well I'll never be able to you know go to college or go to law school or you know do well in school or have you know healthy relationships or have friendships or have a social life um, and not only do I have that I mean I have you know so much happiness and so much so much just like life you know in me.